Alrighty, folks. Hello and welcome to Sonoma Raceway. My name is John Theodore, streaming live at twitch.tv slash john underscore underscore theodore. Recorded version of this broadcast at youtube.com slash john theodore. I want to thank you all very much for tuning in. Going to be in the number three, Corey Bush for Congress 1987 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. This is a 25-lap uh, race at Sonoma. Only a seven-car field. We're running this at 4.30 Central Time on a Friday, so... Never expect a big showing for those, but we did get just enough to make it an official race. Let's go get qualified here, see how we do. Road courses aren't my strong suit. I keep trying to get better at them. Um, I have done some practice this week since the last time I did this one, although I didn't warm up before hopping into this session. So it could be a little bit rough before I get back into the flow of things here. Trying to not wear the tires too much here as we go around for our uh, warm-up lap. Want those tires in peak performance shape when we do our hot lap for qualifying. That first lap is oh so important. The tires are already shot by the second lap, so let's see how we do here. Coming down into the final corner. Green flag. All right, and we're on it. Green flag in the air for our qualifying run. A little bit wide there, but we kept momentum going, so we didn't lose too much time. That was slow. That was much slower than what I wanted. This is what happens when I don't do the warm up though, is that, you know, if I had warmed up properly, I would probably be much closer to my optimal time instead. You know, just missing a little bit. So I'm having to back it off and I'm not able to push it right to the edge of where I would want to be. Hopefully we'll pick up some pace in the race as it goes on. If we're a little bit careful in the early stages of the race, we might have some tire left for the end. 122.6, currently the second quickest time. Fully expect this to be a worse lap than the previous one. But we'll see. It's tracking, I think, a little bit slower, but it's similar. Main thing is to just keep getting warmed up. Didn't quite finish it. So I think we ended up second quick. Uh, the leader was 
less than a second quicker than us and not faster than my best time. So that actually remember, uh, is a potentially good sign for our chances here. Difficult for me. If that gets difficult towards the end of the race, Earl, we'll send uh, Malik down there at Malik's spot. Let's do the pledge while right. we're sitting on grib. I pledge to be right a good sport whether I win or lose, to know that people online are real people and their words have real impact, to set a positive example of my behavior, to speak up against discrimination, hate speech, harassment, and abuse, to show integrity by honoring the rules of my opponents and my teammates, to stop listening and reassess if I'm told that my words or actions are harmful, and to respect others even if their sincere opinions are different from my own. Exclamation mark GLHF in my Twitch channel chat, link in the description below this video if you'd like to take the pledge yourself, be a part of making online gaming a better, more pleasant place for everyone involved. Rock with a beard. Welcome. Good to see you, ma'am. You're going to practice with James Hinchcliffe and Robert Wickens, Arca in Nashville. That's awesome. That's really cool. I'm jealous. Um, Shepard. Shepard. iRacing Meta is taking another run at Twitch with Summit 1G pretty deep. Good deal. I don't think... Is that... I'm assuming that that's a big Twitch streamer. I know nothing about other Twitch streamers. I, I for the most part, just kind of do my own thing. <laughs> And, like, I've got a few folks that I've, you know, made friends with in the community who I tend to raid their channels. Seven million followers. Ooh. Good deal. I might have to check him out. Yeah, I, I don't follow any of the big streamers. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, for me personally... When I'm on Twitch and watching, additional sets of tires for this race. the and have a good I'm not interested in most of the games that the super bigs like. I'm not interested in the Counter Strikes or Fort Titans and stuff like that because I don't play those kind of games. So I'm just not interested in the games that they play. They do a good job, but like for me, part of the strength of Twitch is what we're doing right now. Chat's going. I'm reading it, interacting with chat. So. When the streamers get so big that they literally can't interact with chat at all and there's, like, no personal interaction, it's less appealing for me as a viewer. I, I prefer smaller watching uh, and engaging, interacting with smaller to mid-size streams. So, you know. But when one of those big streamers does come to iRacing and bring their community over. That's great exposure for iRacing. So, um, that's really cool and I definitely welcome it. I was just more explaining that as to why I just, I have no familiarity, no familiarity with the, like, who these big streamers are. Like when, uh, what was it, Giant Waffle? started streaming iRacing. I had not heard of him before he started streaming iRacing, and same with Summit 1G. I, This is the first I've heard of the guy. But, uh, it's awesome. It's cool. I, I, you know, iRacing is a fairly niche community, but the game, the, the, the piece of the software, you know, I, I call it a game because I do consider simulation to be a sub-category within the larger, broader genre that is all of gaming. So, um, it is a simulation, it is a video game with an emphasis on simulation. Uh, All right, Earl, let's do it. And right I think it's a really high quality product, so I love it when, oh, you know, hey, folks that are more mainstream that. gamers come and check it out, because I think there's a lot here to enjoy. Um, it definitely has a, high, a steep learning curve, but the reward and the payoff is huge if you put in the time. Green flag is open. Shepard can actually attest to that, you know, because he's what I would... Shepard, you're more of a... I would consider, you know, all-around, all-purpose video gamer. And I, I really am, too, in a lot of ways. I have a lot of other games that I like to play that aren't iRacing. Um, but you... When you got into iRacing, you fell into the rabbit hole pretty quickly and saw how deep it can go and seemed to really appreciate it for what it was. Awesome Elon Kawiki car that Sean's got there. We're going to try to keep him in our sights. He's pulling away from us a little bit. 
Hey, hey, thank you for that sub. Much appreciated. Let's get some sub Ivan chat. We're on the first laps. So the caps overlay isn't displaying, so I can't see who subbed. But thank you very much. All right, so he's got a 1.6 second lead on us as we go into the uh, hairpin for the first time. It looks like he ran a little bit wide there. We didn't gain on him, but he didn't pull away from us either. I feel like that that hairpin is still a spot where it's a little bit of a weakness for me. I tend to lose time there. So if I'm neutral to him, that was a... Oh, you're going to get him. Come on, come on. Positive, positive for me, of course. The reason it was neutral to him is because he did blow the corner. And then I did the opposite of blowing the corner. Instead of blowing through it too hard, I was just too slow. Beat Elp TV, thank you for that sub, man. He is overdriving his corner entries a little bit. So, you know, I'm recognizing the weakness right now. We might be able to, if we can keep on him, if he doesn't figure that out as the race goes on, we might be able to keep pressure on him and push him into a mistake. But right now he is pulling away from us, so we're going to need to step it up. He is really slinging it. Just trying to, you know, stick with him. Don't let him get too far out ahead. That time we overdrove the entry there a little bit, but he was a little bit messy getting in there too. We're keeping the pressure on. Three laps complete now. Staying right even with him. Trying my best <laughs> to be really precise and just, I mean, with road, ra with all racing, but particularly with road, it's the, it's precision. You just got to be really precise, smooth. Oh, man, he just killed me through those S's. So much better than I was that time through the S's. I lost a chunk time there. Looked pretty smooth here through that final hairpin, turn 11. Roddick in third place gained some time on me that lap as well. bit wide there.
That was pretty good. That felt not great. Hit the uh, S is better that time, though. He's just starting to leg it out on me a little bit. I love wrangling these oval cars around a road course. Particularly these 87 cars, as you guys know. I just love these on any track. Um, they're so heavy and so wrong on a road course. It's just special. Um, it really is. It's a special thing to do. I really enjoy it. There we go. Second gear. That was messy. The FOV flickering threw me off there. Almost hit the end of pit wall, almost hit the tires. We saved it and ended up not losing nearly as much time as we could have. We kept the car straight and salvaged that. That was almost really, really bad. But the problem is, you know, those little mistakes, those add up. He's got a three and a half second lead on me now. And, uh, yeah, all those little mistakes, it's just accumulating as he's been smoother and more consistent than I have. It's not that he hasn't made mistakes. It's that his have been less costly and he's making less of them. Also, his overall pace is just a little bit quicker than mine. So I'm really after having to drive at and a little bit over my limit just to stay with him. But we have opened up a bit more of a gap over third place now, so, you know, we're solidifying ourselves into a second position, which is the number three car, is good for me. You know, that I've talked about this a lot, that, you know, with when it comes to road racing, I'm kind of stacking pennies mode, trying to make improvements each time I go out and have that add up to eventually being where I want to be on road courses. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not that long ago that I might have been struggling to stay in the top five in this field. And now I'm establishing myself in second and still keeping the leader in sight.
and I mean the leader he's got a 3ki rating on road that's that's no joke that's decent that's that's very that's that's good road eye ratings um, aren't as inflated as the oval eye ratings so a 3k on road is you know somewhere probably between a 4 and a 5k on oval I don't know why I went to fourth gear there. That was completely unnecessary. Need to focus on what I'm doing. That felt like a, that, that's been a really good start to this lap. Eight into his lead a little bit there, with a good clean section of corners. quicker than my previous lap and just trying to clean things up. I'm still losing ground in the S's. Need to clean up my line through there. There's just losing a little bit of time. That was a good lap, and we did gain some, though, on the strength of the opening part of the lap. Slow in, fast out. Trying to reel him back in if we can. Squeaky gas pedals back. <laughs> Our old friend squeaky gas pedal. Oh. Mess that up. Try to get a little bit too much. Overdrove it, slid wide. We gave up everything that we've gained the last couple laps.
That was costly. Dang, is going up past is left a race. We get Well, they've given up. A lot of folks, if they feel like their race is done, they don't necessarily stick around. Oh, Roddick has uh, gone to pit road. Interesting. I didn't have any trouble at all going the full 25 laps without stopping on Monday night. I can't imagine that a one-stop strategy is faster than a no-stop here. But if you're really torturing and abusing those tires, you might have no choice. Oh, never mind. That wasn't a planned pit stop. He, uh, he wrecked, I guess. Much better lap that time. Gained back some of the ground that I lost. And we lost 1.7 on that previous lap. That's a killer. Reminder, though, to run my pace and not worry so much about what he's doing. Right now, race the track. Don't worry about what he's doing. I appear to have either save some tire or figured something out, but for whatever reason, it seems like I might actually be quicker on pace than him right now. Breaking a straight line when going into that corner every time seems to be the way to do it. Not as clean of a start to the lap as I usually have. Right through here is often where I seem to gain a little bit of time on them. I'm just smoother with that switch back between those two corners. Maintaining the gap at right around four seconds right now. Ten, to go. Ten to go. We do need to start cutting that down a little bit. 
we want to threaten him for the win. Instead, he's legging it out. He either got his tires cooled down or he has uh, figured something out again. But he's starting to grow that lead once again. Gap's going in the wrong direction right now. Like I might have cut it down a little bit at the start of this lap, though. But then, you know, right through there, he seems to leg it out again. sliding around all over the place. Tires are getting old. And yeah, he's pulling away. We need him to make a mistake now in order to catch him probably. We're just we're running out of laps and the gap is going in the wrong direction. Good through that section. What do I need to do there? Do I need a later cut? Because he's consistently just blowing out the margin right through there. Like everything that I gained, which has looked like about half a second through that first part of the lap, he just gets that back and more through the S's. So that's definitely a section of the track that I need to work on. Everywhere else, feels like I'm faster. in there. Pulled it back in and didn't lose nearly as much time as I did that other lap where I went all wrong, but I can't afford any mistakes through the sections where I'm good right now at all. Too much of a deficit already. And I've got this section of the track where I'm just losing so much time to him.
That seemed better that time. There we go. Fixed the problem with that section from the previous lap. Just get back to hitting my line. The gap is what it is right now. Whoops, a little bit of an overdrive there. Cost me some time. Everything that I gained on that lap lost in the last sector. Five to go, buddy, five more. Come five on. laps left. We're to place right now where we got to gain a second lap. I don't think that's going to happen. So, just get back into the rhythm and don't throw anything away. Finish this thing out strong. He's a good enough road racer. I don't think that he's going to make a mistake and throw away a six second lead at this point. But second will be a good finish for me on a road course. It's going to be um, some additional I rating. Tell you what, without some mistakes, I actually had the pace where I maybe could have contended with him. Which feels good, you know? Maybe if I had warmed up a little bit better, rather than jumping into the race pretty much completely cold, who knows? I'm gonna try to hit this a few more times this weekend though, for sure. Be cool to check Sonoma off the list. Because I am feeling pretty good about how I'm driving here overall right now. Gained that lap, but the gap's still at six seconds. Which 
which is a lot this late in the race. We've only got three laps to go. Seems like it, he might just be managing the gap and when he gets pretty far ahead, he's just kind of easing it off, making sure that he's driving clean right now and not making mistakes. He's not feeling any pressure from me. Two to go. He uh, stretched it back out by a couple tenths that time. Gained a bit on that lap. I mean, not enough to threaten him on this final lap here, but the fact that we're gaining it, gaining it all might put a little bit of pressure on him. It means that he can't just completely run a pace lap on this final lap. And if he does put a wheel wrong, we're in striking distance, but I don't think he will. With a five and a half second lead, he really just needs to keep it on the tarmac and bring it back around. And I really do think that the reason I'm gaining on him right now is because he's just completely eased off and is driving very, very carefully to make sure that he manages the lead and uh, keeps the thing on the track. He's not pushing it. He's not trying to set lap records. Wes, how you doing, man? So yeah, we weren't able to catch him, but we did gain a chunk at the end there. Got a slow car up there in front of you. Good race, John. Nice race, Sean. I made a few mistakes there. I was Got doing everything I could to dig and try to gain on you there. Good race, man. Not bad, everybody. All that going on down there, not bad. Yeah, I was yeah, keeping I my eye on the road the whole time, good, man. Good work, um, I'm a viewer. Keep up the good work. 10-4. Good race, guys. Good race, guys. It came from the pits, and everyone just left the race. I'm get third. I'll take it. Hey, man. Good race. Good win, Sean. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. Really, uh, pretty paint scheme you got on there too, man. Hey, thanks, John. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, keep up the good work on the stream, bud. 10-4, man. Thank you. Have a good one. 
You too, man. Good racing with you. Three point eight. And I mean he was clearly taking it easy there at the end, I think. That or his tires were just absolutely shot, one or the other, but um I gained over two seconds on that last lap. Kept him in sight the whole race. That's good. For a, you know, I'm at 1.8K, although I'm going to gain 51 I rating here. But to keep a 3K I rating guy inside for the whole race is really good for me. I've heard some of the drama. Expedited expansion team? Dude, Chargers would be great. So the, here's the thing is like growing up in St. Louis before we had a football team, the Rams and the Chargers were always my favorite two teams because they had the coolest helmets. So when you don't have a local team to root for, you just pick an arbitrary reason to find someone to root for. Um, so yeah. Cronky, Cronky uh, getting fines. That'll make maybe me happy. Did get all the fuel in there? Like maybe they dropped on lugs, or they're just getting that good of um, fuel that Yeah, it'd be cool. We'll take I the Chargers. You, buddy, really, we really we got the Rams, got a Super Bowl, gave them back. Go back, go back go. Maybe we'll do the same with the Chargers. Although hopefully we keep them. Wes Hammer, thank you for giving that uh, tier one sub out. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Kronke is uh, definitely one of the bad guys in sports, for sure. Um, let's see. We're going to get a different angle for the uh, screenshot here. <clears throat> We're going to get one that has the three of us here in view from earlier in the race. Sean up front looking back at us. This is a classic Sonoma shot here. Um, let's see. We got to move it here. Look further back. Rotate it a bit so that he's up there. Go up. Move this down. Move that up so that we can see my car. Down. And zoom in a little bit. That looks pretty good. That'll be a fun cover shot. Sean makes the cover well earned. Um, I'm having a lot of fun at Sonoma this week. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, West, I, I agree. What it, it was, I think, actually, literally criminal. Like, I, I think that, you know, he's going to have to pay some fines and stuff. Um, plus, it's just disrespectful. And, and, you know, St. Louis, you know, the, the fans here rooted for that team a lot. Um, for him to diss the city the way that he did on the way out was just, just showed absolutely no class. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I don't have any good words for Kronky, so I won't say anything more. Um, 51 I rating, we're up to an 1867 now, continuing to stack pennies and gain I rating on road. Um, 75 points, that was not bad at all. That was, that was fun. So, um, thank you guys, uh so much for watching appreciate y'all if you like the video please do click that like button hit subscribe head over to twitch.tv slash john underscore underscore theodore click guard to give me a follow thank you very much peace out